Blue, are you ready to wrap the boat today? Yeah? Well, let's do it. What's up, guys? It's Mike here, back with another video. Today, guys, we're gonna be wrapping the tracker. So this video is gonna be great for anybody that wants to get in there and do their own wrap. And it's gonna be a start to finish. Everything that you're gonna need as far as supplies, uh, cleaning tips, installation tips, uh, maintenance, and pretty much everything from start to finish. So if you guys are ready to wrap your own boat, this is the video for you, so stick around. Let's do it. All right, guys, Tracker 175 here. Just your standard aluminum flat-sided boat. This is gonna be great for express boats. This is gonna be great for G3s or any other type of flat-sided boats, probably even Vexus boats. Um, and you're probably gonna learn a lot of stuff if you're trying to uh, wrap a fiberglass boat. That's gonna be in a different video because that's a little bit trickier process than these flat-walled boats here. But other than that, guys, we're gonna go over start to finish on what you're gonna need and how to do it. So we're just gonna kinda jump right in. All right, guys, so first thing you're gonna wanna do here is you're gonna to wanna to take off anything that's gonna get in the way of getting your wrap down a little easier. So these little side bunks here, we're gonna pop those off. Now, if you guys have fender wells that can come off, you probably wanna take those off too. The good thing is about this boat, so I got a lot of room back in here, at least three, four inches. I'll be able to get that wrap back in there and uh, shouldn't have a problem with that. Other than that, the front of the boat's pretty darn easy. Nothing really to worry about up here. Good thing about the tracker here is you got a little bit of a a ridge there where we can get that vinyl tucked nice and tight up in there so no siliconing there so that's a plus so that's about it for uh what you want to do for taking off stuff off the outside for uh you know a little bit easier process to get the wrap onto the boat so let's go ahead and take those off and we'll start from there all right guys so for the trackers here it's just going to require a 9 16 and we're just going to take that bolt off on both sides and then go ahead and uh, get this little side bunk off. Okay, there it is. All right, side bunk is off. Now we can move on to the cleaning phase. Okay guys, let's go ahead and talk about the uh, supplies that you're gonna need. First off, to do your prep work, you're gonna need some good old fashioned rubbing alcohol. That's the 70% isopropyl, 3M's preferred method for cleaning surfaces i'm um, just going to need some paper towels to uh do your wiping you can get lint free if you uh if you want to but in my experience it doesn't really uh, make too much of a difference um, secondly you're going to need to get some tape primer 3m tape primer 94. this is a very important step here um, the tape primer basically acts as a adhesive promoter and what it does is it makes a really solid bond with the um, the wrap and the surface of, uh, of your boat. So tape primer, 94, gotta get that. And then to put it on, I like to use these flat uh, cotton swabs. Well, I guess it's not really cotton, but a little foam swab. But um, you can use a cotton swab or maybe some paper towel, but I like to use these flat guys and uh, they work out pretty good, so. Alrighty, so next thing you're gonna need is some 3M edge sealer. This is the 3950. This is to seal the edges. So after you go and wrap the entire boat, get everything post heated and make sure everything's nice and uh, nice and tight, sealed down, you're gonna wanna use this. And it's basically like a, a clear um, sealant and it's got a little dauber, dauber inside of there that you can use to um, get the solution onto your wrap. But gonna have to get some edge sealer here. Okay, so you're also gonna need, whoa, Gonna need a squeegee. This one's from Geek Wraps. They make uh, awesome squeegees here. It's just a, uh, a hard card with a felt bumper that you can moisten. I usually just uh, dip it in some water, get it nice and wet. Helps it kind of slide across the wrap, but um, gonna need a squeegee. And last but not least, whoa, actually, almost missed uh, one of the most important tools right here. Boom, Ulfa blade. I like these little Ulfa blades. A lot of window tinner guys use these. I've been using these for well, almost 15 years now, so um, Ulfa blade with the black carbon blade, um, the extra sharp one, absolute favorite, and I like it in the 45 degree angle, so really important tool right here. But last but not least, guys, some heat. You're going to need some heat, whether you want to use an electric heat gun or flame torch, that's your choice. Um, I use this good old fashioned flame torch gets the uh, panel nice and hot. I don't want to have to worry about 
the tip getting hot to where it burns my skin or burns, whoa, burns the carpet of your boat. So that's why I don't like using electric heat guns because the uh, tips of those guns are extremely hot. So um, that's pretty much it, guys, in a nutshell. All the stuff you're going to need, you know, squeegees. You got your, you got your cleaning, you got your squeegees, you got your promoter to get down on those really hard to uh, hold down edges and then you got your sealer for the uh, the last little bit of uh, security there to make sure that wrap doesn't come off under the water but other than that guys that's pretty much it so we're ready to start wrapping all right guys another tip too is if you can get a little squirt bottle head and stick it on your alcohol bottle it's gonna make it a little bit easier to get that uh, alcohol applied evenly to the surface of your boat um, you don't really need it but it does help a little bit so um, the main thing is we just want to clean it really really good we don't want any contaminants road tar wax anything like that um, the success of your wrap is really going to depend on technique but most importantly your prep so if your preps crappy your wraps going to be crappy all right there we go not too bad got a lot of that gunk off of there Okay guys, got the boat all cleaned up here. With that squeaky clean sound. Just remember, if it's slick, it'll stick. And stay away from textured plastics. Wrap doesn't stick to those. And rubber, it's not a good idea to do that. It can damage rubber. Um, you do see people do, from time to time, wrap that stuff, but it's usually not a good idea. Here's the wrap here. Well, at least one side of it. I've already cut out the other side but um we went ahead and printed it on 3m ij 180 which is uh pretty much one of the most used top brands out there for vehicle wraps boat graphics trailers everything like that and then we laminated it with a uh 8518 gloss over laminate so we're just going to go ahead and keep trimming these panels out and get ready to put it on the side of the boat time for the primer gonna get your q-tip out and uh, this part is crucial. Without doing this, the likeliness of your wrap coming off underwater, uh, especially towards the backs, especially towards the front, um, is pretty high. Like I said, this stuff is um, an adhesive promoter. And what it does is it makes more of a permanent bond with the surface and the adhesive on your wrap. So what you wanna do is go around anywhere where an edge is gonna be on a boat not a car <laughs> and uh, you're just gonna want to trace the bottom all the way around and we're gonna go ahead and not put any up here because it's a flat edge so none of this is gonna ever peel off it's got a little bit of a lip right here too which is gonna keep the edge protected but pretty much just back here on this boat and then along the bottom and that's pretty much where we're gonna trim the wrap and it's gonna make a semi-permanent bond and then once we finish the wrap, we'll come back over it and hit it with that edge sealer. Also too guys, it doesn't take much of this stuff. You don't need to like gob it on or, you know, put a really thick line of it on. Actually a thin coat is gonna be the best for you. And uh, you're gonna wanna let it dry for a couple minutes. You don't wanna apply this wrap wet. Um, this stuff has to dry or else it doesn't work out too hot. Ooh, how am I doing so far? Pretty good. Are you still entertained? You are? Nice. Well then go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Tell them Blue, hit that thumbs up button. I'm just gonna hang out right there. Okay. Blue's gonna inspect the wrap as we go. All right, we're just gonna get this taped up kind of in the corner here. We're gonna run it all the way down. Now this part looks a little wild, and it is. This is pretty much just kind of getting the overall adjustment of the wrap. What I did do is I did tape it to the corner back there, but I am gonna have to slide it over just a little bit. Um, I primarily just did that so I can wrap the tape around just to get a good grip on it. But um, once I kind of get it 
scoot it around exactly where I want it. Then we'll uh, pretty much just tack one side and then slowly just work the, uh, the wrap towards the front of the boat. Okay guys, we're just gonna separate the tape here. Just kinda remember roughly how high you had it. Gonna peel off the backer just a little bit. Tore there a little bit from that tape, so careful with that. And we're just gonna pull off just a little Pretty much just to get that wrap stuck down a little bit and then we'll work our way all the way down to the front of the boat and i'm just going to lightly kind of finger tack it in there where i want it you're going to need your squeegee now and i'm just kind of shucking it in there and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to kind of follow that groove that's under the top cap and that's how we're going to level out this part of the text and then we'll do that for the, the logo part of the wrap. Working this paper. Now I've got a little bit of an edge. I don't want to quite go all the way down under and wrap this part yet because it's going to kind of box you in a little bit. You kind of want this part of the wrap free flowing for this, uh, for this boat. I don't want any type of um, you know, pull or, or tension on any of the wrap. I just want it to kind of be as flat as possible while we're working it down. And then we can come back through once we get the top laid, then we'll kind of put a little stress on that vinyl and get it pushed down in there. All right, guys, so we got the back part hinged up, with the wrap lightly tacked on the boat. Pretty much just gonna reverse roll this wrap all the way. Get your tape pulled off, moved out of the way. I'm just gonna keep rolling this all the way back up. Kind of get it out of that wheel well a little bit. Like I said, if you can take off your wheel, you know, your fender wells, take them off. Anything to make this process a little bit flatter is gonna make it a little bit easier. Get the tape off. I'm just going to keep going. Now, once I'm able to get the backer paper, I'm just going to hold the core and pull the backer paper with your opposite hand and kind of work it in here. And every so often, you can kind of tack it down with your hands, kind of see if you're going up or down. Looks like we're going down a little bit, so. We're just going to kind of give it a little tug, get it pulled back up, and we're just going to kind of push it down where we need it. We got the full wrap completely de-skinned, got the backer paper all the way off, and now we just need to kind of adjust it by uh, pulling the backer, pulling the backs of the wrap a little bit, kind of get it tucked up exactly where we need it. Still double check, make sure that nothing, nothing's cut off, and then uh, get the squeegees out and go to town. All right, switching it up to the flat ruler. It's going to be a little bit easier so I can Kind of get that flatter in there without having that little edge to worry about. I'm just going to put it up in there. We're two inches right on the money. Double check this edge here. Inch and three quarters. So we're just going to bump it down a little bit. This part maybe take a few minutes. Just depends on how good you get it on the first couple tries. Sometimes you get on the first pull. But uh, usually you have to kind of bounce back and forth a little bit, but there you go, first try, two inches. Got that contractor's eye. Okay, we'll check in the middle, two inches. I'm gonna go ahead and check down here towards the end. 
sitting at two inches, so that's all nice and level now. We're just gonna kinda give it a little flattens to the wrap here, which we call glass. So we're gonna glass it out, make it as flat as possible. Right on that ridge there is a nice place to kind of finger tack it. And then we can come back through and work the bottom last. All right, time for the torch. Now, uh, if you guys aren't comfortable with the torch, I'd recommend getting a heat gun, electric heat gun. Um, but for people that have been doing this a long time, the old school method, we've been using torches for a long time. So I'm gonna use a torch for this. Uh, just gotta be really careful not to burn your wrap. It's really easy to do. What I'm looking for is a slight shrinkage and then I'm pulling the flame off. Um, and usually the wrap's gonna shrink for a few more seconds after that. So just be careful with the torch. You know, you don't wanna burn yourself. You don't wanna damage anything, but um, torch is really good because it's just instant heat. Uh, so what I'm looking for is light wrinkles, nothing that's uh, too tight, something that's just more of a wave. Um, you can either squeegee those out or you can kind of light, lightly give them a little heat. Just letting them wiggle, give that a few seconds, they'll flatten right out and then you come back over with your squeegee once everything's cooled off and then just getting little air pockets out. Um, ideally. Try to use less torch than uh, than just good old-fashioned uh, squeegeeing. But for boats, torch is going to be uh, your best friend. All right, guys, got a little little water on the squeegee there, and uh, we're just going to go ahead and start working this top edge. Probably work down. Um, kind of depends on how the vinyl wants to react. Another thing too is you want to make sure you're not doing this outdoors. You want to be doing it inside of a garage, um, something with no fans going, ideally about 75 degrees. Um, I probably wouldn't do it over 80 or under 60 because the colder your wrap is, the more brittle it's going to be, the less it's going to want to tack up. And the hotter the wrap is, uh, you're going to have like weird stretchiness to it and it's going to be like ultra sticky. So um, ideally 75 degrees closed environment um, and you should be good to go. Just kind of working it little by little. Take your time, it's not a race, just get it nice and tight in there. And don't be afraid to, to tug on it, don't be afraid to pop it off and, and realign it, readjust it, it's completely fine. It's, uh, it's made, to, made to reposition and that glue really won't set up for at least 24 hours. So you can definitely put a working on it and not worry about glue coming off. I'm just trying to Keep the vinyl somewhat tight without stretching it. And I'm trying to do it at 45 degree angle strokes. Helps cut the air out. And I'm using pretty much medium to firm pressure. And uh, if you do see a wrinkle or you do happen to, to get one in there, you're gonna wanna get that wrinkle popped out and uh, give it a little heat, let it shrink back down. If it's a small, light, hump wrinkle, you can probably just torch that, get it flattened down. But if it's a tight wrinkle where it actually folds over on itself and actually causes you know, some texture, then you're gonna wanna pop that out if possible. If it's too far deep in the wrap and uh, you know it's like down in the middle somewhere, then you're pretty much just gonna have to leave it in there. So you wanna be real careful. It's not what you wanna do, but it's, better to leave something like that there dead center in the middle or somewhere deep in the wrap than possibly ruining the whole side of your wrap. So. Just kind of working it down to that ridge. Just giving it some nice hard taps, getting it up to that metal ridge that I have. Just kind of going over it and 
keeping this bumper wet is also crucial too. Keeps it from dragging and uh, helps slide the air out quite a bit better. Just seeing a little little tiny bit of waviness here. Just gonna warm it up a little bit, get that wrap to flatten back out. Hit that again in a few seconds with the squeegee. You don't want to squeegee anything that's hot. So if you just hit it with your heat gun or your torch, you want to give it a few seconds to cool back down. If not, that wrap is going to be super, super stretchy and you'll probably end up ruining something. Okay, we're just gonna keep moving along. Probably already got about four feet of the top done. On this area, it's gonna get a little bit harder because you're working into a curve. So if you're working a, you know, a fiberglass boat, this is where you're going to want to spend a lot of crucial time making sure you got everything exactly where you want it. And what I'm doing is I'm just kind of kind of creating a little bit of an air pocket here, and I want to get this wrap as flat as possible to the boat and with this big huge bump rail here it makes it a little bit difficult you know, if you're on a fiberglass boat you can go right up and over it and then wrap your top cap but uh in this boat you just kind of have to work it in there a little bit and i'm trying to keep the adhesive side face down away from that part so it doesn't get stuck but once i kind of get it where i want it I'm going to tack it in a little bit, give it a little tension on the bottom, and just light tack small areas, quarter size, just enough for that wrap to kind of bite it a little bit so it doesn't fold down on itself. And then I'm going to kind of work this uh, wrinkly area out, and I'm going to get the same thing. We're going to go for that glass effect. So a little tack here, a little tack there. And that's flattened it out a lot better. So same thing, we're gonna kinda get this thumb tacked exactly where we want it. Just kinda getting it up in there. We're doing this as flat as possible. And then we got a little bit of this waviness here. We're gonna get that all glass back out with just a little bit of heat. But you can see where we did little tacks here and there, about a foot apart, where we're able to get this thing a lot flatter than it was. So that's uh, what you're going for. So now we're going to come through and hit it with the torch. And I'm just going to wave it along. Sometimes I'll do lines, sometimes I'll do circles. The main thing is just flattening it out. Sometimes I'll go over it in a and a once over and then I'll come back through and then hit it again. This really depends. Just kind of waving it, letting that wrap wiggle a little bit. Not letting it get too hot, not too close. Constant moving. And you can literally see it shrinking before your eyes. it we'll let that go for a few seconds let that flatten it's gonna tighten up and then we should be able to get the squeegee back in there and go back to town on it all right that's kind of flattened itself out a little bit so we're just gonna work that vinyl the same way we've been doing it 45 degree angles if you've got to open up some air and just give it a little tug at the top if you got a little bit of air in there just kind of get it nice and flattened out. And if you're unsure if the wrap's going down a little wonky, you know, just kind of stop and figure out, hey, you know, I need to get this tugged this way or pulled a certain way. Um, the last thing you want to do is start squeegeeing it down real hard and then find out, wow, you got a problem on the other side. So I'm just trying to 
work the wrap, you know, like a, like a typewriter from top to bottom and left to right, and then just kind of be mindful of, you know, what the front's doing, what's the back doing, what's the bottom doing, and as long as you're on top of everything, you should be all right. <laughs> All right, just wetted the bumper for the third time. Don't forget to wet the bumper. I'm gonna go ahead and peel this back just a little bit so I can get this nice and flat. This is the part of the boat where it's gonna probably give you the hardest amount of time. And we wanna get that nice and flat in there. And it's gonna take a little bit of finagling to get this glassed out. Because you're working with this big, huge four inch lip here so you're kind of wrapping it blind for, for a few seconds but once I kind of get it where I want see where it's nice and flat and glassed out right here as long as the top's glassed out I have an out through the bottom if I have to work a wrinkle and I can't get it out because of this ridge here then it's gonna be a lot more difficult so if you can get the top part nice and glassed out where the say the top three inches is then just give it a little bit of a finger tack, kind of pop it a little bit, and then you can pull that wrap just enough to where it feels like it's flattening it out a little bit. And then you're just gonna do that finger tack method like we did towards the center. So it looks like this whole nose part is pretty darn glassed out, so that looks really good. We're gonna go ahead and work this little danger area right there, and it looks like we'll probably just be able to pop it out, push some of that air out, and then we'll probably heat it up, kind of give it a little bit of that torch action, get it nice and um, hot, and then let it shrink back down and it'll flatten itself out. So hopefully you guys can see that. Might be kind of tricky because of the lighting and you know, it's a black wrap, but it's got a little bit of wavy action here. The nose, it's all good to go. I'm just gonna go ahead and get some of this air out here. I'm gonna finger tack the top a little bit. Just adding a little bit of tension, just flattening the wrap out, just creating that glass that we're looking for, and we've got most of them out. I'm going to pop the air that's on the bottom just a little bit, just give it a little bit of a wiggle, a little bit of a tug, and we're just going to finger tack it a little bit. And I'm not completely closing off the edges because I don't want to cause a big huge air pocket. So I'm always keeping some type of flute of air to where I can squeegee it completely out. And if you get small bubbles in your wrap or, you know, they're like, oh my gosh, how did I forget this area here? And say, say this whole D is like, a, you know, um, one large bubble. Well, if that does happen, worst case scenario, what you can do is slightly work it into a circle. Don't quite, you know, form it into some tight donut or anything like that. And what you could do is you can lightly just needle pop, you know, perforate the entire circle, let it simmer for a little bit and then slowly start working it in. And then eventually that air will come out of there and then it'll dissipate. But um, if you're going across the entire wrap from top to bottom and you're taking your time, you shouldn't have any air in your, in your wrap at all. But if it does happen, that's what you can do to get it out. All right. I'm gonna give this just a little bit of heat here now that we've got it flattened out where we like it. A lot of times I'll start at the top um, and work my way down and then come back up. That lets the top part start shrinking a little bit and then the heat from the bottom is gonna rise up and then really start shrinking that wrap back up. Okay, we're gonna give that a couple seconds there. It's gonna flatten up. Then we're gonna start working that air out through the top, out through the bottom. And then once we have that pretty much done, we'll move back to the back end and then we'll start working the lower part of the boat.
up here it kind of flares out a little bit more flat but on the back of the boat on the trackers you got that little secondary hump that comes in and uh, we'll have to get under there and probably lay it on the ground and get it nice and tight under there. Like I said, I'm just taking my time. I'm watching the vinyl. I'm using you know, medium to firm pressure. I'm not pushing it down so hard that that glue starts to set up. That's all completely down there. You can probably, well, you might not be able to see that, but the bumper's wet, so it's sliding nice and easy. Prevents, you know, surface scratches on your lamb. It just helps the overall installation process so much more. Just kind of working it up in there. And it looks like uh, I've got a good method here of getting the air out through the top, so I'm going to kind of slightly close off the bottom just enough I'm just going to kind of make 45 degree angle strokes at it just work it line by line try not to miss any air so you don't have to come back through and pop any of it out working it line by line 45 degree angles just like that no 90s just 45s okay once I get back to this top spot here this is where I'm kind of shucking it in with a little bit more a little bit more power sometimes I'll use the hard card there if I need a little bit more dexterity on the on the air but for the most part I'm going to use the bumper side but if it looks like the uh, air is wanting to be a little funny and I need a little bit more detail I'll use the hard side but for the most part we're just going to use the felt side and I'm just shucking it in there making sure I've got a little bit of air to shoot out so it doesn't wrinkle over itself you can kind of hear where I'm making a solid contact with that ridge and there is a little metal ridge under there if your boat doesn't have it then you'll probably hit the bottom of the uh, the top cap but mine's got a little bit of ridge there which is gonna be nice because we'll be able to put our razor blade in there and then get that vinyl shucked up under there okay guys on to the back here this is the part where it tucks down under this is all part of the wrap that we didn't wrap here yet we didn't want to cause any tension towards the front of the boat so the good thing is it's nice and flat you know I don't want to see any crazy wrinkles in here and if you do then uh, you'll probably want to either reevaluate how you put it down back up here or give it a little heat um, but this looks pretty good I've got a little bit of um, I wouldn't even call these wrinkles but just a little bit of areas where it's not as flat and you can just give it a little heat a little bit let that flatten down a little bit and uh, that'll help get that glass a little bit faster but all in all this is just a nice flat panel here and we're just gonna put a little bit of tension on the bottom give it a little bit of a tug probably gonna jump off the seat here so I can get a little little bit lower to the to the ground and then uh, we'll pretty much just work the wrap exactly like we did on the top uh, just pretty much on the bottom so once we get it down to the, that final edge there It'll be done, and then we'll go through and uh, trim it, edge seal it. Um, well, we'll post heat it first. Got to make sure you post heat. Post heat it, and then we'll edge seal it. And uh, this side will pretty much be done, and then we'll move on up, and then I'll show you guys how to wrap those top caps. Just got a little bit of tension on the bottom of the wrap. That's going to keep that air nice and flat. You can hear there was a little bit of air where my bunks was scraping up the old decal that was under there so we were able to get that pushed out but that's also what I'm listening for too any type of like crackling sound 
if you've got a busy wrap that might be hard to see, any type of like snap or a crackle sound, if you can kind of hear that, that's a little bit of air under that decal. And we had a good one right there. So that would be a great spot to show you guys how to work out one of these smaller bubbles. So I'll show you that in just a second. What I like to do is I like to let them simmer for a little bit. They have uh, micro air release channels in the glue. So giving it more time is going to be easier to get a bubble out like that. So this will be a good time to show you guys what to do when you, if you uh, get one of these guys buried in here because I don't want to pull the wrap up just to get that out. So we're going to pop that little bad boy out in just a second. All right, we're just going to kind of move it on down. You probably get into a weird angle here, depending on your boat. A lot of fiberglass boats have some really crazy angles on the front of the boat, so um, just just know that you're going to be in for a workout. <laughs> a lot of times what I'll do is I'll get on a creeper or I'll just lay down flat and then it puts a little bit less pressure on your neck. Just kind of giving it a little bit of warmth too can help uh, get that glass a little bit faster too. Just, just remember not to stretch on your wrap too hard when you give it heat because it'll stretch it stretch it out of uh, proportion. Okay, so for a bubble like that, um, ideally when you pop it, you're gonna want something like a sewing needle, but if you don't have that, you can just use your razor blade you know, or an X-Acto knife or anything that's gonna pin poke it. Um, but I'm just going to try to work it into a little bit more of a circular shape so the air can jet out on, on all angles. I'm not making it tight at all. I don't want it to go any tighter than it all the way it already is. So we're going to go ahead and get your blade out there. Make sure you got a nice sharp tip there and pretty much a standard little perforation all the way around and I'm just trying to be mindful not to um, wrinkle it or anything like that so I'm just gonna let that simmer gonna give it a little bit of heat should flatten it back out a little bit now on a bubble like this it might not wiggle too much because it's already been kind of compressed but as you can probably see it's starting to flatten out right before our eyes and uh, you know just poke it nice and gentle you don't want to do any damage to the clear coat or you know gel coat or anything like that but just kind of let it let it simmer let it do its thing and then usually what I'll do is I'll take the uh, the tip of my thumb and just kind of rub it out and get your squeegee there and that's about it so that's how you take care of a little bubble like that like I said um, you don't want to make that bubble any tighter it's gonna be the tighter it is it's gonna be a lot more difficult so if it's a loose bubble, you can go through, perforate the entire bubble, give it a little bit of heat, and just let that air extract out of those little holes that you made. And then uh, once it flattens out, just kind of give it a nice wipe there, and it's flat and bubble's completely gone. Before I completely close in the bottom, I want to make sure that I'm not boxing myself in, kind of like what we did with the top. We didn't wrap the full bottom because we wanted to work it in sections and kind of make our way down so same concept goes for right here I want this logo to be intact but I've got a little bit of wrap up here that we still need to address so we're gonna slide through we're gonna get that all down and then we're gonna slowly work our way all the way to the bottom I don't want to go straight to the bottom straight to the bottom straight to the bottom because you're gonna cause a lot of uh, wrinkling in the wrap and that's gonna be a, a really big problem for you so just work it in lines left to right top to bottom the whole way through same thing here we're just going to warm the wrap up a little bit that's going to help me get that glass just a little bit faster but like i said if it's too hot and you pull on it too much you're going to stretch your wrap out and you don't want to do that so what i'm really looking for is just giving it a little bit extra heat and depending on how hot your garage is or your shop, 
you might not have to do that at all but it's about 70 degrees in here so um, I'm just kind of getting it just a little bit warmer to make it a little bit more easy, easier to apply. There's that ridge there, it's starting to make its way down. Closer towards the back of the boat, the, the ridge is a little bit more aggressive, so just kind of be mindful of that, that it's going to going to change angles on you a little bit. You're trying to keep that pressure consistent 45 degrees. It's got a little bit of a pocket here. We're just going to try to shrink down a little bit more. Just kind of be careful around your carpeted bunks. Got that flattened in, it's starting to shrink down, it's starting to you know mold to the shape of the bottom of the boat here. It's nice and flat, there's no wrinkles, there's no waves. You know, you're trying to always minimize wink wrinkles and waves. You don't want anything that's gonna cause the wrap to, to be a you know wave or a wrinkle. Uh, especially when you have straight line designs like this wrap. You know, I've got a lot of straight lines in here. Um, you know, if there's any type of wrinkle or wave and you work it a certain funny way, well then this straight point is not going to be straight anymore and you're going to have wavy lines and that's also a big no-no. It's going to be a little difficult getting behind this wheel well here, but just take your time and you'll be able to get it out. All right, nice fresh blade tip there, and uh, gonna follow that groove right around the top. Get the bottom rolled in and um, trim it out. Be really gentle. Don't wanna don't wanna scratch anything. Don't wanna cut any clear coat, gel coat, anything like that. And then once we get that, we'll run it back over with a torch uh, across the entire wrap. Post heat it. Get it nice and hot. Make sure that glue is completely down. Make sure there's no air in there. Um, then we'll run that little um, sealer. And then that that will be it, and that's pretty much that's pretty much the whole wrap in a nutshell. All right guys, got it all trimmed out. Now uh, another extremely important step is to post seat the entire wrap. Same thing goes for getting all the air out. I'm looking for air. You're not gonna hear it with the torch, but if I see any like air coming up, then I know I need to work that area. But I'm just gonna coat the entire wrap, get it nice and hot. Don't burn it, but get it nice and hot. And then um, we're gonna go ahead and get that sealer out and then we're gonna seal the edges. Pretty much what I'm doing is just getting the wrap nice and hot. I'm looking for any air coming up. If there is, we're gonna get it down. For the most part, it looks really good. I'm not seeing anything popping up. Wraps nice and tight. And you really, really, really want to make sure you get your edges. The edges are probably the most important spot for post heating. So you can make sure that that wrap has made a nice solid contact with that primer. Okay guys, time for that 3950 sealer there. We're gonna pop this can open, 
and uh, go ahead and ply this around the edges. Uh, this boat, not going to worry about the top because it's shucked up under that ridge there, but we're gonna, definitely going to hit the bottom and uh, all the way up on the back side there. And uh, super important step, got to have this. If, uh, if you don't, you run the risk of uh, your wrap peeling off under the water. So definitely get yourself some sealer. Okay, guys, that's the little daba there. And we're going to put a generous amount. Don't smell that blue. And uh, we're just going to kind of get the edges there. Coat the blue. Jeez, man. It's dripping there a little bit, so we're going to clean that up. But we're going to coat this entire edge here. And uh, we want a nice overlapping amount there. And uh, I rarely go over it twice, but if you think you got it a little thin in some spots, then it doesn't hurt once it's dried, but you'll definitely want to make sure it dries. Super, super good there. And uh, if you guys are worried about this kind of a messy edge there, um, you could lay some painter's tape and then make it a nice clean edge, but I'm not too worried about it, so. All right, well, pretty much you're gonna do this whole process to the bottom of the boat, all the way up to the nose, we're not going to worry about this because I've got this nice tight edge there that we're able to shuck that wrap under there. So not going to need any sealer there, but definitely the back, absolutely the bottom and definitely up under the nose. So seal those bad boys up and uh, that's pretty much all you need to do for the sealer. Okay guys, side of the boat's fully wrapped, ready to go. Um, going to do the top cap here. We're going to use a lot of the uh, exact same techniques to um, get this little guy put on there but um for the most part if this has uh been helpful so far give me that thumbs up it really does help and um if you guys are new to the channel you like stuff like this i post this stuff from time to time so hit that subscribe button um other than that guys we're gonna go ahead and start on the top cap here we're gonna get it wiped down with that rubbing alcohol get our panel out get it all uh, ready to go and then go ahead and squeegee this bad boy down and uh one other thing too we're gonna put a little green tape around these little cleats here that's going to help the the wrap kind of sink down around them when we have to trim and it also kind of protects that metal a little bit so we don't uh, scratch it up when we cut it but other than that guys similar process just going to go ahead and repeat it and uh let's go ahead and get this top piece put on all right guys got the top all wiped down nice and clean looks good let's go ahead and get that wrap on there Hey guys, got the old cleat taped up with the green tape, painter's tape. Now we can uh, pretty much run that wrap right across the top of it and it's gonna have less stick because it's not slick. And also it will um, kind of be, be a little bit protected so when we have to run that blade around it, so just in case you slip or something like that. So, you know, anything you don't wanna score or anything like that or anything you want to, uh, not stick as much go ahead and just wrap it up with a little bit of that painters tape all right guys so got our little pieces here and uh got a little bit of extra lamb hanging off the edge if that gives you a little bit of trouble just go ahead and cut it off but it's pretty pretty small so it shouldn't but um yeah just kind of get your panels situated how uh how you want them um, you know, if this was a fiberglass boat, we probably would wrap this all in one piece and just roll it completely over for one seamless design. But I went ahead and did it a little bit different to make it a little easier so I didn't have to do the wrap over method. So we're pretty much just gonna get these situated um, how I want them and then tack down in the back, roll it out all the way to the front, and then we'll have a little wildness down here by the console. So we'll probably zoom in on that, show you, show you what's up over there. All right, not too picky about how that goes because it's just kind of some top graphics. So we're just gonna pack it down and walk it forward. So we got it pretty much exactly where we want it here. And uh, we got a little bit of um, 
some area to work here around this console. Since it's textured, that wrap's not gonna stick. It's just gonna slide right under there. So I wanna kinda get it dead center in there where, where I got a little bit of bleed to cut off in the front and then the rest will just kinda shuck down in the back and you won't be able to see any of that. You could remove your console, but it's kind of a pain in the butt, so I probably wouldn't. But um, we're just gonna get that shucked down in there and then it'll just be hiding under there. Just gonna kinda get that edge kinda locked in place. Make sure you don't go off course there. It's easy to do because it is a little bit of a curve. on it that'll help get that glass I'm just kind of giving it a little tug towards the direction I want the wrap to go just kind of using the tip of the felt side still going at those 45s I'm just going to slide down and give this back part a little lock in get this little wrinkly part out here Now, like I said, if this was, you know, fiberglass boat, nine times out of ten, the top cap is done with the side of the wrap. It's never really done in two pieces, but you could do it like that. But if we had to do it on this boat, since that lip came out, this, this rail comes out so far, it would have been uh, quite the challenge, but it can definitely be done. I've done it either way, um, so I usually like to do the easier way, so that's why we separated in two different prints all right so we're pretty much right on top of that cleat there I'm just uh, I want to go around it like one nice big pocket I might make a relief cut around it just kind of depends on how it feels um, these are riveted in so I didn't want to drill the rivets out and redo all that jazz so we're just gonna go around them but most boats these are either on the inside um, and they're usually screwed in so it's kind of strange seeing these riveted in but if they are riveted in then uh, you know you can take those out and put a bolt through them or just kind of go around them like we're doing here but ideally you'd want to take them off if you can so we're just going to kind of kind of bubble around it try to make a, a dome or so around it and then we're going to make some small cuts around it and that's going to let us sink that wrap right on top and then we're going to give it a little bit of heat it's going to shrink it back down into into size and uh be good to go so i'm just trying to get a an overall outline of the top part and then we're going to get our our blade out here open that up and then sink it right down make sure your blade tip is nice and fresh you always want a sharp tip when you're starting on something like this I'm just gonna go around it real gentle and I'm trying to trace the top outline I don't want to go too far out if you do that then you know you're gonna have some paint showing and if you don't do enough then you can always come back and trim in a little bit more and uh, do it just right you will just be able to get it on the first try so let's see how good we did here all right, so that's cut, relieved, and we can kind of work it in. Looks like I got a little bit more uh, cutting to do right there. I might be able to just squeeze it down, just kind of depends. But I'm just kind of trying to work it down nice and flat. I don't want to pull it or, you know, discontort it or anything like that. So we've got it down a lot lower. We're going to give it a little torch and see if we can get it to tighten up a little bit. Just also too, torch or heat gun. Just be careful. The carpet's not so much flammable, but it is, you know, plastic based, so you can uh, jack your carpet up. All right, warmed it up a little bit. It's kind of shrinking before my eyes. Just going to kind of pull it a little bit while it's shrinking. That's gonna help it kind of conform 
around the shape and it's got a little bit of a tip here i wasn't able to get that completely cut off so we're going to come through we're going to take a little bit extra wrap off just a tiny 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 little piece about the size of a fingernail i'm going to blast that with just a little bit of heat and see if we can get it to shrink backwards just a hair See if we can get that thing worked in there just like that. Go ahead and get that squeegee out. Start working it towards that cleat. I'm just trying to circle it in. Just slowly tighten up that circle there. And then once you get it really close, you can switch to that hard card side. Get a little bit more detail on it get a little bit more dexterity and pretty much just shuck it in all the way tight nice and flush and that tape should start you know letting that wrap slide right off the edges of it and then we'll come back in once we get the tape off and make a nice fine trim get all that excess off of there All right, guys, so we got this little console area to get get around here. And uh, it kind of tapers in a little bit deeper towards the front. So we're just going to kind of work it all the way up to that edge there. Just shuck it in. You don't have to go too deep because we're going to run our blade right along the bottom. As a matter of fact, if you do shuck it in too much, it might be hard to cut that vinyl. So I've got it all chucked in to where I can still maintain an edge with the, uh, the console there. Kind of a flat edge there. And what I'm going to do is, now that I've made it to the part where it starts to curve in, I'm going to make a small relief cut, not all the way down to the paint, but about a quarter inch above it. I'm going to go up with it just like that. And don't cut your console. Now that's going to give me a little bit more flex around this turn and I might have to make a few more relief cuts while I'm working it. But at least this part right here is, is good to go. We could pretty much cut this and trim that completely off now, but we're just going to keep working this around. And as soon as it wants to start bunching up again, we're going to give it another relief cut. And you might have to use a little bit of torch too. Okay, got that to flatten down. Helps let that vinyl release. Just working this top cap here, getting it a little bit closer to uh, the console. Okay, it's nice and flat. You can see where it's making a little bit of stretch, a little bit of tension there. Just want to. Also make sure you're not putting too much stretch on it that it tears it. So we're going to kind of come in and make another one of those. About a quarter inch from the paint. Go straight up. And I'm probably just going to put another one in right there. That's going to help open it up a little bit. It's going to create just enough, just enough curve for us to get that around. And you can see where it kind of falls right into place. Use that hard card, kind of make a little bit straighter line there. And if you guys can see that, we're able to wrap completely around the console without taking it off. And then we'll just run a blade right under here. Try not to cut the console. And uh, pretty much just shuck the rest of the vinyl in. Look how nice and solid that cut line is. I'll come back around, put that little hard card in that groove just to make sure that wrap didn't lift up a little bit. And it's got a little bit of a, a lip there. You can kind of roll it down under there if you wanted to. Well, okay, guys, there it is. 
it's all wrapped up top to bottom everything post heated sealed all wiped down got the top caps in there got the cleats all tucked in all wrapped around the console there got the back cleat all sunken in nice back of the boats all sealed up bottom of the boat there it's pretty much all we got to do is just put the uh, side rail back on and that's it so that's pretty much how you do it guys from start to finish there on a aluminum boat specifically the bass tracker and uh wasn't too bad so let me know what you guys think blue we're done we're all finished blue did i do a good job yeah all right all right guys boat's all wrapped up here blue's giving it the old stamp of approval he said i did a good job so if blue says it's good then it's good huh blue haha <laughs> okay guys let me know if this video helped you guys and um if you guys got any questions let me know down in the box below um, I'm really fast to uh, replying to everybody that comments down in there and if you like content like this hit the subscribe button because I post a lot of stuff like this and I do a lot of fishing videos how-to videos creek stuff and pretty much everything in between um, but other than that guys thanks for watching we'll see you in the next one see you